All right. Hey, everybody. Here we are, ptfinalexam.com, having a free Google Hangout. Let's see if we can get anyone in here. This is always fun. The first part of these broadcasts, always very interesting to see how many people can get in when, when the people do start showing up. Let's see. I said we had about 100 and some odd who were going to be joining us tonight. And so, let's see. Truth is, I'll probably edit out this very first portion of, of this broadcast just because it does take a while to get everybody in. Let's see if we can get everybody in here. Hmm. Always puzzling to me why it always takes so long to get everybody in. All right, we still have zero viewers there in the chat box. Zero viewers. There I am. Okay, let's see if we can get everybody to connect. Okay, hey everybody. Sweet, we're starting to get people to show up. This is great. Very exciting. Always kind of fun to 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 get these Google Hangouts started. Always very interesting how how it, there's it always has a little bit of a lag time getting everyone into the into the room here. And so, as I said just a moment ago, we'll probably be editing out this very first portion while we're getting everybody in here. Um, I don't know. It's it's exciting today. I've got I'm trying out the new brand new blue microphone. Well, I guess it's not that new. I've been a little hesitant to try out the blue microphone just because I don't know. It covers. I have to speak right here directly into it versus the the headset that I have been using, you know, makes me, gives me the gamer look if I look like that. Anyway, decided to try something new this time around. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I know there are a lot of students that are going to be in this class or in, um, in this session tonight, this Google Hangout that are a, a part of my, my live class, my mastermind study group that we're starting this uh, Saturday. So hopefully this, there's, you know, in their case, they're probably going to be learning a lot of these same things on Saturday. But to try to keep it fresh, you know, we're going to, going to learn lots of lots of new and interesting things tonight. Um, maybe talk about some things that you already know. Talk about some things that that you need to know. Uh, get you on the right path for the NPT. So, very very exciting. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. We've got about thirty of you in here, and I do expect that we that we're going to have over a hundred if we can get everyone all in the same place at the same time. Uh, just to give you a little introduction for who I am, my name is Will Crane, physical therapist, uh, registered in, or licensed in the state of Idaho, Utah, Wyoming. I grew up in Idaho. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about me and my training uh, down the road here in just a moment. I do have a presentation that's um, really, you know, I guess what, what you'd call brief, nothing too exciting as far as PowerPoints go. It's, um, but it does help me get through the material, you know, in a, in a, in an organized fashion, I guess you could say that's, that's something that is important to get through the material in an organized way so that you can, um, I guess, follow my thought process. So let's see, let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So like I said, Will Crane, ptfinalexam.com, your awesome resource for preparing for the NPT. And I guess I will put a little pitch in for, for me right here is that, you know, if you go over there, you can check out the blog. I honestly haven't updated it here, and I guess it's been already about eight weeks. I've been really busy doing some uh, both family things, um, mastermind study groups have been really busy, but there's a lot of good information on that blog. Plus, you, so you can always subscribe and, um, you know, just check out all the great content that we have. Let's see. So there you go. Be sure to head over there and subscribe or just like us on Facebook or Google Plus or you know, pretty much everywhere you want to be. So let's see, we're going to dive right into the topics here. Okay, so the 2015 NPT, this is something that is, you know, for a lot of people, uh, it can be a little bit daunting to think about, okay, the NPT is actually coming. A lot of you are scheduled for the April exam. Some of you aren't planning on taking it until later this year. And in, 
In any case, no matter how you look at it, it's important that you understand some key things going into the NPT this year. And so I'm going to talk about kind of the, the basic, the keys to success getting you through the NPT this year. And so I guess a little bit more about me. I studied, uh, you know, got my DPT 2008, 2011 at the University of Utah. And right now I, I practice at a rural hospital in Idaho. And that's, for me, that's been a lot of fun just because it represents such a wide portion, proportion of, of the PT population. I guess what I'm saying is that in the morning, I'll work on some geriatric cases, then I'll go do some orthopedic cases, and then I'll do some pediatric cases, then I'll do a sports case, then I'll run on a home health visit, then run, do an inpatient down in the hospital. I mean, and then there's wound care, there's always wound care in the middle of all that, pediatric. I get to see a little bit of everything just by, by nature of being in a rural, you know, in a rural place. And so that's something that's been really, really fun for me. I'm working towards a, a sports and an orthopedic specialty certification. Those are coming slowly. As you know, to get those certifications takes, uh, let's see, at least it's about two years of full time in those specific specialties. And so, again, that's something that comes with time. I've been working slowly towards that. And because I, I do work at a place where I see lots of things, it's hard to get just one all the time. And I started, started this whole thing back in 2012. Uh, really just started out as a blog that turned into more and more coaching. And then I started to, to formalize it into our official, uh, as I call it today, our mastermind study groups where we all get together. Um, we, I have a team of PTs that help me. And then we really help a lot of students. We've, we've helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students get through the NPT. And it's something that has, has been a real pleasure for me. Uh, I did. I wanted to throw in this picture here. In February 2013, I went and did a humanitarian trip down in Otavalo, Ecuador, which was super fun. Uh, the the funny part was that I spent almost all of my time doing vision screenings, and that's what I'm doing with this lady right here, doing vision screenings, um, rather than any sort of. I mean, we were only there for a week, and so the physical therapy portion was really really quite minor if you consider the, the follow-up required for physical therapy. But I really enjoyed working with folks. And that's something I do intend on, on continuing down the road is doing more and more of those humanitarian missions just for fun. So today, I, just kind of the five bullet points we're going to go over as we, as we do this. We're going to talk about the content outline and what you need to know about the content outline and to know that the content outline actually exists for the NPT that is published by the FSBPT which is the governing agency that takes care of the NPT. We're going to talk about the updated eligibility requirements that will affect, uh, well, it affects everybody, but for some of you, it's going to affect you more profoundly. And so that'll be something that you'll want to, to pay attention to. We're going to talk about where the test is actually written from, the material that, uh, that's required for the exam. We're going to talk about effective study, study habits, and then we're going to make a plan. So that's, that's my plan for tonight. I say, and I do have a guest who's going to be joining us here in a few minutes who she's going to talk about her journey that's maybe a little bit unique, but at the same time is, is very inspirational. So let's see. In January 2013, the content outline on the, on the NPT was changed to reflect a higher proportion of questions from those big three categories. Now, this was, you know, Let's see. So 2015, when a lot of you started PT school, you know, back before 20, you know, if you started before 2013, the content outline had a, an even representation between the big three that we know now, musculoskeletal, neuromuscular, cardiopulmonary, and the other systems. And really the big shift came is when they, they changed it from, or basically they took a lot of questions away from that other systems and non-systems domains in favor of the other three, the big three, musculoskeletal, neuromuscular, cardiopulmonary. So really for you, and by the way, the content outline is published on the FSBPT's website. You can check that out, fsbpt.org. And um, uh, let's see, what you'll be looking for is the candidate handbook that has all of this information, plus it has the the PDF files of the, of the content outlines. And these they do change every couple of years. Seems like they, you know, 2013 was just just not that long ago. But really, um, they they do change it every three to four to five years. Kind of depends. But for the most part, it is going to be the same material as you go through. And honestly, it it reflects our our knowledge and our 
our purpose as physical therapists is that we spend all of our time in musculoskeletal, neuro, neuromuscular, and cardiopulmonary rehab. And then those other systems and non-systems domains, those trip up a lot of people. And I honestly haven't, you know, for the non-systems, like the, a good modalities book, you can read up about ESTIM, that sort of thing. But professional practice, um, research, those are topics that are very difficult to really just find a good book and study from. And so those those are ones that it is nice to know that that doesn't represent a very large portion of the exam. And the important part in knowing those, those non-systems is that one, you need to have some clinical experience. So you would know, you know, in a, you know, in a particular scenario, how to best work with a patient if an ethical question comes up. And then the other thing is with research, um, research again just requires exposure to the terminology, actually having read some research articles and looking at the, the terms and, and structure format of those research articles. And that's, that's really what you're going to need to know on those non-systems domains. The other systems, you know, it's gastrointestinal, um, genital urinary, let's see, metabolic. Those ones are, again, just a small portion of the exam. All told, other systems and non-systems is only about 28% of the test. And that's according to the current, most current NPT outline that's published by the FSBPT. So really, the biggest thing I want to, my big take home point from this is just you need to be aware that there is a content outline that does have the material published of what's going to be on the exam. So when it comes to the, the second point here, talking about eligibility requirements, this is something that's new this year. It's, or I guess new in 2014 is when they announced it. And then is, is going to go into effect in 2016, on January 2016, is that you will now have only a lifetime limit of six attempts at the NPT. Now, the good news is that 90% of American trained students do pass on the first attempt. But there are a great, and I guess the, the flip side of that is only 33% of foreign trained students pass on the first attempt. So really what it means is that you need to make your attempts count. Up until now, and all the way through 2015, the lifetime limit was, I believe it was 18. You could take it up to 18 different times. The, the record holder that I've talked to has only taken it 13 times. I haven't talked to anyone who's taken it more than 13 times. I'm sure they, they do exist. But... Basically, that lifetime limit is something that, like I said, will affect some of you very much more profoundly. In the year 2015, you can st still take it three times, up to three times. You know, that's my last bullet point there. You can only take the test three of the last four test dates. So you could take the exam three more times in 2015. But once January 2016 rolls around, if you've taken the, the NPT six times or more, you will be permanently ineligible. And that requires the state to appeal on your behalf. So you have to, you have to make good friends up there at the state, at the state licensing board, if you want to do more than that. Let's see. So, and then the other, the other thing is the minimum score requirement. I haven't met anyone who's who's come up against this, but this was a security issue. They wanted to make sure that that only qualified applicants were sitting for the exam, and so. If they figure you're sandbagging the test or if you're just on the test to memorize answers and give them to all your friends and you score less than a 400, two in a row, because they determined that if you score less than a 400, that you're practically guessing on every single question, then they will uh, disqualify you forever. So again, that probably won't affect anyone here tonight, but uh, just just that's one of the updated eligibility requirements that starts in January 2016. Let's see, the third point I want to talk about tonight is the source of the NPT content. So we talked about the content outlines. Now, what is the, what is the source? Like, where are they actually getting that information on that content outline? And this is uh, taken right off the FSBPT website. There's in the 2012 exam committee report that was at the delegate assembly, they talked about how there is no official set of references for the NPT and just reading straight off their, their quote here, rather, references should be from a widely accepted authoritative source and should be from the most current edition of a publication and should be based on textbooks rather than journal articles. And so the FSPPT put a lot of effort into getting a uh, textbook survey to find all the textbooks that PT programs around the country are using. And so they came up with the textbook survey, and I, I put the posted the link right there, fsbpt.org slash download slash textbook survey 
201, 102, anyway. You can find that on the FSBPT website. And that lists uh, a large number of books that um, PT schools around the country are using. And what that is, that's really a jumping point for you as you're getting ready for the NPT to know what sort of books are are being used. And that's that's something that I refer to very frequently for students, that they really need to be spending lots of time in the textbooks. And so that's my big recommendation. 90% of your study time needs to be in actual textbooks. And the reason for that is that's where the material comes from. Now, and you know, I don't want to take away from any of the review guides. Heck, I've got a, a little review guide you can buy on my website too. But the review guides just don't have the depth of material required for you on the NPT. So the good news is, is if you have those textbooks, you should use, probably use a review book as a guide to take you back into the textbooks and go through the material in an organized fashion. The big three that I recommend uh, categorically are McGee, O'Sullivan, Kisner, and Colby for those um, regular textbooks. That's, let's see, see if I can remember the titles, Orthopedic Physical Assessment, Physical Rehabilitation, and uh, therapeutic exercise. Those are the big three. So you're going to be spending most of your time in those actual and real textbooks. That's something that's that uh, I'm a big stickler on. If you join my group, that's that's something that I really insist on is that you're getting all of your information from real textbooks. It's it's just so critical. And the the funny part is that even just having the textbook open and the chapter open, and you're not even, it's not like you're reading it, you know, from cover to cover, trying to read a textbook. Rather, you're looking at it topic by topic. And as you go through all that material, you're going to notice that your, your depth of understanding increases. You're going to recognize more and more, like the way they phrase things, just the phraseology, for lack of a better word, that it will, will pop up again and again on the NPT because that is their source, the textbooks. So when it comes to effective study habits, you know, the fourth point here, effective study habits, really, uh, I mean, at this point, you, you, you've gone through your doctor physical therapy program, you're, you're really pretty good at studying. And that was something that uh, I guess really bothered me when I was in PT school was that we had a whole class on teaching and learning like we're doctorate students. Shouldn't we have learned how to learn by now? But it does stand to be a good reminder that that really we retain 90% of what we teach someone. And so that's something that, again, I'm a stickler on when people ask me, okay, how do I prepare for the NPT? You have to find someone who you can explain it to and that's someone who's comfortable enough with you to ask the question why. Ask the question why. Absolutely critical. Because if you can teach it to someone, that means that it's going to stick. It's going to stick in your head. You're going to actually know the material rather than just trying to cram or trying to memorize it. And as a, uh, perhaps as a really good reference for you going forward, I have a free study outline on my site, 17 pages worth of topics, very specific topics that you can use like a checklist. Head over there and you can, um, yeah, like I said, use it as a checklist so you can make sure you don't miss anything in your NPT preparation. So this is the real key is that you need to, at the end of the day, you got to make it happen. You know, the material is going to be on the test whether you study it or not. And so therefore dive in and make it happen. Now, what I recommend is, is that you grab my study outline from my website, absolutely free. Grab the study outline, get out a highlighter and a you know, pen, print it off, make sure you've got it. And then I want you to go through all of those topics and mark the top 10 weakest for you. And once you've done that, you've got kind of a prioritized attack list. You're going to be able to jump in and start attacking each of those items little by little. And then once, you, and the, the idea is that as you do 10 and, you know, you check each one off as you learn about the material, as you check it off, you're going to replace it with something else. And you know, in essence, you're going to be starting at your weakest material and working forward to your to your strongest material. And really, your strongest material doesn't require much studying at all because it's your strongest material. Prioritize plan of attack. I had a college a professor in college who told me that prior preparation prevents poor performance. Honestly, the the sooner you create a plan, the sooner you dive into this, the easier it's going to be for you. You're going to make you're really going to make things happen. And so, part of Part of that, part of that preparation, I have what I call my mastermind study group that I started a couple of years ago. What it is is it gives, 
it gives you a framework for how to study for the NPT. It's hands down the most effective preparation course out there because it's the most difficult one. I structure everything off the content outline. I make you work and study your eyeballs out. I tell you what to do, crack the whip over you. We help you with the difficult questions. We take you through everything and then we send you on your way. And it's, it's really interesting how students say, you know, Will, I took the exam one time and it, it was really hard and I didn't pass. And then the second time I came, you know, at the second time I approached the exam, it was almost like it was a totally different exam. And it was simply because they had prepared themselves much more thoroughly for that, for that second exam, for the, for the second time around. And they, it was something that was just very, very, really opened their eyes about how their preparation had lacked the first time around. And so I, I want you not to make that same mistake. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring on, let's see, we'll go back over here. I'm going to invite, I've got a, a special guest. Her name's Hallie, really awesome. She was a student of mine, is working in um, New York these days and is, is having a great time, specializes in cancer rehab, lymphedema. We're going to see if we can get her on the line here. But um, anyway, she's, she's someone that has a lot of insight. I'll let her, her share her story, which is, which I find very interesting, very unique, all things considered. You know, you know, just she's as bright as anyone as anyone can be, and just really has has some has some great insight for us. So if we can get her, let's see if we can get this. Uh, see that that's the fun part about Google Hangouts is that it all it all happens live. You get to see it as it comes. Let's see. While we're getting her up, let's see if this chat function can work. Anyone see that chat box in the corner? Can you type in the chat box? Can you see the chat box? Anybody? Anybody who's out there? Chat, chat, check, check. That chat box. You know, I feel like I should start whistling the, the Jeopardy theme song as we go through here. Let's see. While we're waiting for her to get on, let's, let's see. Oh, good. Good. Hey, what's up, Hallie? Hi. Sweet. So just been talking about, you know, about the basics of the NPT, how everything fits together, you know, what they should be studying. And then I just gave you a glowing review about how, uh, how awesome you were and how your, your, basically your story is, is a little bit unique compared to a lot of other folks, but does have some, you know, has, has some key points, some key things to learn from. And so, if you wouldn't mind, could you just share with us, I don't know, give us kind of the brief rundown of your story. Tell us how things went, what went right, what went wrong. Sure. I just want to make sure you can hear me. Can you hear oh, yeah. me? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so I graduated PT school in 2010. So I started this journey quite a couple of years ago um, and graduated, hurried up and got a job and then started to study for my boards. So New York State they allow you to work on a temporary license. Um, got into um, working habits and studying, which wasn't so easy for me, um, and so didn't wasn't not successful the first time. Uh, hurry up and took it again, because figured I'd, I'd just get it out the way and do it again, um, and wasn't successful again. So was getting a little frustrated and figured um, I needed just to focus on studying. Um, after a while, when I wasn't successful, I had some advice to become a PTA, take that exam, and start working being field again. So I ended up doing that um, and kind of ventured out through all different kinds of uh, exploring of different courses. So there was a couple I have taken in the past, some um, longer or shorter than others, and all not um, what I needed. So. Until I came across this um, this course by uh, Will Crane, who I guess was exactly what I needed, um, I was able to work through and actually pass. It took me 11 tries, but I never gave up and I did it. And just a couple of strategies that I used, I guess, while I was in this um, in this course with Will. Um, number one, my best advice is you get what you put into it. So. Um, it's definitely a journey, but it's well worth it. Um, the amount of time you put in studying, doing the assignments, um, that helps tremendously. You can't just um, 
kind of slide by and just say, you know, the assignments are not assignments are not helpful. They're not gonna they're not gonna be able to. They're not what I need. Um, Will has a structure where the assignments are built in a way where they help you to understand the material. Um, I also was able to find some time to uh, to connect with the students, so we ended up. Um, finding some similarities and some differences and spend some time outside of the course studying. So we would do some Skype chats and a lot of phone conversations and find someone's strengths and weaknesses. So my strength is inpatient and hers was outpatient. So I think that helped a lot. Um, we, we would meet for Skype chats at least once or twice a week. And then as it got closer, we were able to do um, more frequent. But we definitely helped each other out. Um, and that was a big, big help for me. So one of my advices would be to start um, find, connecting with someone, maybe someone that you see in the chat box is asking similar questions, or maybe someone that, sees, that is answering and, and might have a little more strength than you do, and try to connect with them outside so you have that study buddy, because I did not have that until this course, and that helped tremendously. Um, in addition to that, um, just you know, following the assignments, sharing, asking as many questions as you can, taking advantage of Will um, allowing you to ask as many questions as um, both males. He's available on his Skype chat, so he we actually met on Skype a few times and answered my questions, and he really takes the time to be dedicated to uh, really helping you pass. So with that, I was able to, right after the course, finally be successful. And that's almost a year later, so I've been working for a year and been able to be in the field. And, you know, I can honestly say, with the hard work that I put in, I probably would still be trying to take the exam. So, that's my story. No, that's, that's I, I really appreciate story. your story. Yeah, I, I feel like you know, in your case, you passed on the 11th attempt. I mean, honestly, that's something that's, you know, how how do you keep going? I mean, there's there's certainly going to be a few students here who are listening tonight. Is how do you how do you persevere? How do you make it through? I, I mean, from what you told me, every single time you took the exam, you were in the 70s. You were only just a few questions off every single time. How do you persevere? How do you just keep going? So you're right. My lowest score, I think, was a 72, and my highest was a 74 um, with probably being two points away or one question away at one point. Um, and, you know, I definitely go through those phases where I'd be really upset and figured, you know, I, I don't know what to do. But I'd always kind of take maybe some time to think about it and then go out there and try to look for more resources. Um, and I did that consistently until I was able to come across this course that I just took with Will. Um, but I mean, it, it's not easy to pick yourself up after each um, attempt, but I just thought I put in this many years in school. Um, I know I'm good. I know I'm a great clinician as far as um, in the internships that I did and see with my temporary license. And then while I was working as a PTA, I mean, working as a PTA for a year and a half, I would get people, um, OTs, PTs in the department, that would just not realize that I wasn't able to do evals. I mean, it was to the point where it was really just this exam standing my way, and I think that built up my confidence a lot. I think confidence is a big, big part of this whole um, journey, I guess. I originally, I guess when I first started taking it, did not believe in myself as much. I didn't believe, I didn't see myself as a PT. I didn't um, believe that I kind of deserved this. So um, I think changing my attitude and, and seeing how successful I was with doing these assignments and submitting them and getting great feedback and, and seeing that, you know, I really do know my stuff. It's just, you know, this exam that's standing back kind of helped me um, keep going, I guess, for all that many tries. For all that many trials. I mean, really hats off to you for, for you know, really just persevering all the way through everything. And so that's that's something that really speaks to your character that you were able to, to really just make it happen, to really make it happen in the end. And so, really appreciate yeah. you coming on and sharing your story. That's that. I think that's so valuable. And so, I I think I'll um, you know, send you send you on your way. Now we're gonna go down the list and talk about a little bit more. 
and mostly take a lot of questions. We're going to take tons and tons of questions. So again, thank you so much for coming, Hallie. I really, really appreciate it. You're welcome, You're welcome and good luck to everyone. And don't be afraid to ask questions because that's how you learn. If you just sit there and passively listen, um, you know, you're not going to get your questions answered and you're not going to really understand the material. So don't be afraid to ask. That's right. <laughs> that's right. You've got to ask the mm -hmm. questions so you can get it right. answered. Yeah. That's right. Perfect. All right. Well, thank thank you so much. Appreciate it. You're All right. Welcome. So. Yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to dive into, so Hallie talked really well about about the, the mastermind study groups. Really what it is, is we've got, uh, it gives you that mentored small group feeling that is just so critical when it comes to, to learning and understanding the material that's on the NPT. And so I've got, what I've done, Hallie took the course in last July and since then we've expanded a little bit. Now I've got me plus two other just amazing physical therapists who are with me and we're trying. What we do is we give you even more access to us, give you, get, give you a chance to get all of your questions answered. So, you know, very much this, this does sound like a pitch for, for my class, but I, I think you'll find that it's the most effective one out there, certainly the most difficult, and it takes you through the content outlined in a way that maybe you, you know, maybe you haven't thought about before. And um, it's... It, it, you said it, Christian. Very, very inspiring. Her, her case is one. I mean, you just wouldn't expect that. I mean, she, you know, American trained physical therapist. She was great during school. Did really, really well, and then took her eleven tries to pass. And really, I think what it came down to is just, just really becoming very, very comfortable and confident in all of the material. That's just that's so hard to do, and so critical to do as you approach the NPT. So. With that, let's open it up for questions. You know, we've got the question and answer, um, basically that question and answer app that's on the side of the of the window here, so that we can, you know, what I want you to do, I want you to start typing your questions. If you do have questions, you know, I'll we'll be here taking questions. You know, hopefully answer all the questions that you've got for me tonight. Um, let's see. Yeah, Christian, anyway, and so then I can post, you know, what I'm currently answering. Christian, you're exactly right. Very, very inspiring to see how well, how she made it through and persevered through the hard times. And maybe that's that's something that I I would speak to is that it's, there's nothing really easy about this process. And I, I'm, you know, I'm a big proponent, a big fan of just finding your, finding your why, finding your reason, finding what it is that, that, that inspires you to keep going, even if the going gets tough. So, um, I that's that's the real key. I mean, at the back of the score builders book, I I find it amusing. They've got that a picture of a palm tree in a in a, at a you know Caribbean beach somewhere or the beach chair. I think that's great. Great if if that's what inspires you is is going somewhere tropical when you when you finally have have that PT job on the other side, then then do that for me. My big inspiration is my family. I've got a, a wife and three kids, and they're just, I mean, really just mean the world to me, and, and this, is my, this is the way that I can take care of them and be with them is, is to have a, a career that I love, a career that, that pays well, a career that takes care of me and my family. So really, really, really like that. All right, let's see. Nilesh, you write, hey, Will, I appreciate all these efforts you do. Can you please share a sample assignment when you give out the assignments of your study group? Absolutely. I put all of the assignments are available. You can see them all. It's, it's, all, it's all there on the enrollment page on my website, ptfinalexam.com. And you just click on the, on the top tab and you'll find the enroll, enroll button. And on that page, you can download for free. You can download the syllabus. And the syllabus includes all of the... the uh, assignments, as well as what I've referred to as the study outline, that 17 pages worth of topics that are on the NPT. And so, yeah, you head over there, you can get those, like I said, absolutely free. You can just download it, check it out. And that's something that, that I am, am a, again, that I feel very strongly about. It's very important to be very transparent. And so I tell you, you know, exactly what you're going to go through. I, I don't um, you know, don't hide anything. It's all there. You know, the assignments. Heck, I've even had people who just, you know, checked out the assignments, downloaded them, and then uh, reported back after doing all the assignments independently and said, will I pass the test because of, because of the hard work that's on those. I was very dedicated and just did it all by myself. And so, you know, 
that's that's something that that can be done very important to um, to just be very transparent and so i i hope that it's a real benefit for you let's see what is the pass rate from a class so very good question i get asked that all the time hard to really pin down that number just simply because not everyone reports back to me but the people that do report back to me i i divide those into two separate groups the people who do all of my assignments, who attend all the lectures, who are very active participants, have about a 90% pass rate, which I find is very, very good, especially considering most of the time students don't take my class until they've failed the exam at least one time, which is terrible. I wish they'd just take it the first time and save them a lot of money and a lot of hassle. Um, but that's just, just the nature of things that, that most people try to do it on their own before. And so everyone who is is very active, does all the assignments appropriately, does everything you know with full purpose of heart, has about a 90% pass rate. Overall, if you take everybody that's enrolled in the course, and uh, it's about a 75%, 70, 75% pass rate. And that includes the people who just show up the first day and then don't ever report back, that sort of a thing. So yeah, about, about um, overall 75% for the very active participants, the ones who really do do it all, 90%. Let's see, Will, how many questions would you recommend to solve before the exam and which resources? So in, in my class, I recommend you take at least four practice exams and I provide one of those and then I have you track down three others to do on your own. So um, those could be the, you know, what students have told me is that the score builders exams are slightly easier than the NPT and this is just student feedback, slightly easier. The O'Sullivan ones from Therapy Ed are slightly more difficult. The PEAT exams uh, from the FSBPT site are right on par with the NPT. Um, most students report that mine is slightly more difficult than the NPT. And so kind of that's your, that's your gauge to, to look at. And so as far as how many, at least four. And that's, so that's a lot, of, a lot of practice questions. So we're talking 800 to 1,000. And which resources we talked about that. Let's see, which resources would you recommend for pharmacology? So you got to check out the book. Let's see, I'm, I've got it over here in my, in, in my um, bookshelf, but it's called Pharmacology and Rehabilitation by Ciccone, C-I-C-C-O-N-E, Ciccone, I think that's the one, Pharmacology and Rehab. That's by far the best one that I've found. Uh, research, I haven't found a really great book on research, so most of the time... I recommend to students to, to find a couple of research articles, like the actual article itself. You know, it doesn't really matter what it's about. Just find a couple of those that are, that are representative of real research articles and go through and look at the words they use and make sure you know what it's talking about. That's, I mean, a simple exercise. You can use Wikipedia. I mean, heck, just Google search, you know, positive likelihood ratios, negative likelihood ratios, sensitivity, specificity. If you know the terminology and how to read those articles, you'll be in really good shape. Ethics, again, that's there, there are a couple of books on Amazon about physical therapy ethics. Really hard, those ethical questions, ethical dilemmas are ones that are hard to really represent in a book. And so most of the time, those just come from practice, like clinical practice, actually being... In a, and that's part of the United States training is that each student is required to spend, let's see, in my case, I had to spend 32 or 40, somewhere around that, 40 weeks in clinical experience mentored with a physical therapist looking over my shoulder the whole time. So hard to know uh, specifically on the ethics books. There's not really one for research. I just recommend finding a couple of research articles and understanding what they're saying. And then Ciccone or CIC, I guess. See, I speak Italian, and so Ciccone is the way, way we would say it in Italian, but Ciccone, 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 maybe that's how you'd say that. C-I-C-C-O-N-E with uh, pharmacology and rehab. Let's see. Will, do you know, do you happen to know what kind of score on the practice tests are comparable to the score required for the NPT? So that's a very good question. Again, one that I get asked a lot. And that's that's a hard one to say with exactness because I have I can't tell you how many cases I've had of students who have done like gotten at least 80% on all their practice exams and then still failed and gotten like a 72% on the NPT. 
And I've also had the opposite where people have been getting 65, 67% on their practice exams and then pass the NPT. So there's, there's no hard and fast rule. As a general rule, you, you need to be shooting for that 75% mark. Um, for the most part, like I said, the score builders ones are slightly easier. So that means you need to be getting up above 75 and the, the O'Sullivan ones are slightly harder. So that means you could be okay in the 72, 73 mark, but really you should, let's just say 80%, get up there and 80% and you're really going to be pretty safe. Hope that answers your question. Let's see. How long a student will be spending with you on a study group uh, every week? How long will they be spending with me? So I do the, the lectures on, so my class meets twice a week, on Saturdays, Saturday mornings, and then Wednesday evenings. On Saturdays, I'm the, the one running the show there. You get to see, see my face, you get to hear the dulcet tones of my voice. And in that case, you know, you'll, you'll be watching me. And then on Wednesdays, I have these other physical therapists who help me who do these question, more informal question and answer sessions where really you have a question, you type it in, and, and we try to answer just as many questions as possible in, the, you know, in about 60 to 90 minutes. And we just, we just burn through lots of questions. As far as what you need with me, that totally depends on, on what, you, what questions you have. So most of the time, a quick email will suffice. So that means you're not, not getting a lot of FaceTime with me. But sometimes it just, you know, I really like phone calls. I'm able to, you know, like I said, I've got three kids. And so often I can be taking care of the kids while I um, am doing those phone calls. And so often we can spend some time on the phone and get those, those questions answered. And then those, I'm, I've got those other PTs who are with me who are also very, very knowledgeable. In fact, were just in your shoes about six months ago and um, have really you know, they, they feel your pain and they, they know what they, what you need to study. And so they're, they're going to be really, really good resources. And so by the time you, like, like I said, you've got all of us to, to choose from as far as how much time on average each week, I, I think you need to be talking with us, you know, on average, at least, at least 15 to 30 minutes each week, somehow, whether it's whether it via email, telephone, um, we give you lots of assignments. We send you through and we, you know, like any good instructor, if it's something you can just look up in a textbook, I'm going to send you to the textbook. But if it's something that's more advanced or something that's, that's you know, you know, for instance, a bad, a bad question to ask would be, Will, what is EKG? Or tell me about EKG. You realize there are five or six books, you know, books and books and books written about that. It just is not an effective use of our time. I'd send you, to, send you back to the books to what is EKG. But if you ask me the question, Will, what's the difference between primary and secondary heart blocks? I understand kind of the premise, but I have a hard time really seeing what the big difference is. And in those cases, you know, we can really, really focus in on specific topics. Let's see. Do you recommend the book Differential Diagnosis by Goodman? And are we supposed to know all the special tests given in the McGee book? So yes, I recommend differential diagnosis. And no, I don't think you have to know every single special test known to man. But you do need to know the top special tests for each uh, diagnosis. So for instance, if you're talking about meniscal tears, you need to know the McMurray test. If you, you know, ACL tears, you need to know Lachman's test, anterior drawer test, pivot shift test. And so really, those the tried and true the the big meat and potatoes of special tests you need to know those the random ones like the coleman block test or I'm trying to think of any of the other random ones but the random ones cuz mcgill will list like 15 for each one you should in general know what they need what they are testing but i i wouldn't i wouldn't spend all my time on memorizing random special tests i would work on the top 3 for each diagnosis and understand them very thoroughly and that'll get you through most of the most of the material. Let's see which one out of the NPT or score builders would you recommend for review? I recommend textbooks. And so the review books are fine, but they just don't have all the material you need. So what would I choose if I had to have a review book? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not not sure that I, I would recommend one over the other, but I would definitely recommend having the textbooks that we talked about. McGee, O'Sullivan, Kisner and Colby, Ciccone, uh, Differential Diagnosis by Goodman, uh, the, kinesiology, see, the Kinesiology book by, I can't see it right away, but Newman? Yeah, Newman. Yeah. 
kinesiology by Newman. Those, those are the big ones. And the FSBPT publishes that content of what's, what's on or what books are used by PT programs and therefore the books that they use in writing the NPT. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Hey, Will, I'm planning to give this the exam in October 2015. And from this session, I realized to get a group study of questions. Do we have do any groups or sessions currently scheduled? Right now, I've got the one that's starting on Saturday. And then I start all of my other groups about two months before each exam date, about two, two and a half months. So I'll be starting uh, the next one in May. And then the one after that will be in August. And that would be in August, preparing for October 2015. So there you go. I think that pretty well takes care of most questions we've had tonight. We've been going for about 45 minutes. Hurry and type in your question if you do have any other questions. As you know, this is going to be posted on YouTube for future viewing pleasure. Anyone who, who wasn't able to make it tonight, because there are a lot of people who are on different time zones or who are working or, you know, a number of cases that wouldn't be able to make it exactly tonight. Let's see. Hey, Will, it appears the O'Sullivan practice test are quite a few questions on pediatrics and gross motor development. What are your thoughts on how much studying should be done? So those are part of... So pediatrics, that's, again, something a lot of people just glaze over. Pediatrics fits into those, those big three. Now, cardiopulmonary, maybe not quite so much, but neuromuscular, a ton. So you think about cerebral palsy patients. Um, I mean, I guess Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, that doesn't really count as neuromuscular, it's more musculoskeletal, uh, cerebral palsy, like I mentioned, those childhood illnesses and developmental milestones, those fit into the the 75% of the exam. And so really, I've had a lot of, of students say that it's varied, you know, there, there are a lot of questions on pediatrics, there's not very many questions on pediatrics. Bottom line, you need to know pediatrics, you always got to, you need to know pediatrics, you need to know pediatrics, geriatrics, orthopedics, all of those when it comes to those big three. So how much studying should be done? Um, in Especially in that neuromuscular section, you need to be spending about, well, yeah, about a third of your time on childhood illnesses and developmental milestones. And I mean, maybe a third is a little bit too much because there's the spinal cord injuries, traumatic brain injuries, cerebrovascular accidents. You have all of those different topics. So maybe more like a fourth. I don't know. You need to be spending time on it on those childhood illnesses like cerebral palsy, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, uh, cystic fibrosis. Um, I'm sure I'm not mentioning a few of the other big ones, but really those big childhood illnesses are the ones you need to spend, spend your time on. Let's see. So any other, like I said, any other questions, be sure to, to type those in here quick before we, before we wrap up. I really enjoy doing these Google Hangouts. I think it's fun, fun to, I don't know, feel feel like I'm interacting with lots of folks. I do have that the the study group that I'm starting this Saturday that that that's been just a ton of fun. We, like I said, we've we've had at least hundreds of, sorry, they said hundreds and hundreds. I think we've passed the thousand mark for students who've taken part in that program. And it's it's just been so much fun working with so many students. And then to to see them what I consider you know, high risk students, students who have had troubles passing the exam, like Hallie, you know, she, she took it 10 different times, and then to be able to help her make it through on the 11th time, and numerous, numerous other examples like that. That's just been so, so much fun. Let's see, another question came in. Do you recommend any other book for ortho rehabilitation other than Kisner, or is Kisner enough? Kisner's going to be pretty darn good. And then O'Sullivan's physical rehabilitation will be a really good adjunct to that. One that I use on a on a pretty consistent basis is um, it's called the Handbook of Orthopedic Rehabilitation by Bratzman and Wilk. And it's a smaller book; it's only a couple hundred pages long, but you know, smaller. And called the Handbook of Orthopedic Rehabilitation, and that one contains a lot of protocols, lots of lots and lots of various protocols that are really useful in, in a real life situation. It's one that I've used probably the most since starting my practice, you know, because like a random diagnosis will come in. So for instance, um, ulnar collateral ligament repair on the, sh on the elbow that'll come in and, you know, I really don't do a lot of ulnar collateral ligament repairs on elbows. And so you go, 
I mean, you use a lot of your PT knowledge, anatomy knowledge, and then you go and double check a protocol just to make sure you're progressing the person at the right pace. So there you go. Let's see. Can I please suggest some books for gait? Um, McGee has a really good section on gait at the very end. Um, so that's called orthopedic, orthopedic physical assessment. I'm sure I'm butchering that. But by McGee, that's, that's probably the best one on gait. I know there are some specific books on that, like kinesiology books. And I think O'Sullivan Physical Rehabilitation also has some stuff on gait. Um, yeah, I'd probably recommend McGee on that one. Let's see. If you have, if I have your outline study, how would you advise to evaluate my readings and follow up? If I cannot afford the mastermind study group or home bundle. So very good question. Really, if you're getting bottom line, you need to be getting your information out of the textbooks. And when you're getting it out of the textbooks, that means you're getting it from a reputable source and you're, you know, you don't have to check the material. So really that's that's the good news is that if you're getting it from a good source there's not a whole lot of checking now it's just a matter of sticking getting it to stick in your mind so there you go that's that's probably the the biggest thing i would advise for you is just make sure that you could and that, well i guess the other thing would be if you could find someone in your local area who would let you go and shadow them and that way you could get some clinical experience and then bounce some of your questions off of a, a practicing physical therapist That'll get you a lot of traction to uh, getting it to stick. So let's see. Next question. What is a good resource for reviewing burns? Um, very good question. Probably an integumentary book. Let's see. What one do I have? I've got, I've got a, there's a couple of, I haven't found a really awesome wound care book. Um, Amazon has, has a number of them like wound care and rehabilitate or wound care for nursing. Those would have sufficient material for burn rehab. Really, any sort of, yeah, really any good wound care book. And I, and by any good wound care book, I'd probably refer you to the FSBPT's textbook um, survey. They have a list. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll look that up right now while I'm talking to you. While we're talking, I'll tell you which one is used the most. Let's see, physical therapy for children. Human anatomy. See, that's the thing is there's not really a great book on this. So that's why here you're looking it up on the FSPPT's website as we speak. Oh, where is it? Wound, let's see, wound management by Myers is the most frequent one wound management by Myers, but there's also one by Bates Jensen called Wound Care, a Collaborative Medit Practice Manual. Again, I'll refer you to that FSBPT textbook survey. And I think if you just Google that textbook survey on FSBPT, you'll find it. So there you go. That's, that's probably the best resource. And there is a lot of material online for burns and wound care and ulcers too. That would be really Again, just a good Google search will find you lots of good material on that. For the July test, when should you enroll? Next one will start at the end of May. So I recommend enrolling at the first part of May. I usually try to run a deal for the early enrollers who are enrolling at least a month early. And so check back. Really, the end of April, first part of May will get you through that. Let's see. Do I believe in studying only the major categories each week? Well, so if you're taking the exam in April, you only have a limited amount of time and you've got about eight weeks left. And so you'll probably need probably need one or two weeks for each of those sections because they are so big. So, 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 so big. So, it, and it also depends on your current knowledge base. If you already know a lot about the material, a week will be fine. If you don't know much about the material, you're going to need more like a month for each topic. And so, yeah, really it depends it depends on your knowledge, your knowledge of the material. So let's see, program use Dutton instead of McGee. Um, no, I think Dutton is very comparable. I've got a copy of it and honestly don't use it very much. And on the list, it's not used as often as a McGee, but... I think it's very comparable, Dutton and McGee. So which book is good for manual muscle tests? You got to get Kendall's. Let's see. What is it called? Kendall's. Oh, here. Let me look that up again. Kendall wrote a book called 
Mm-hmm. Having a hard time remembering the name. Don't know why. Let's see. Muscle Testing and Function with Posture and Pain, written by Kendall and updated back in 1993. That's probably one of the oldest books that they have on the list here, but it's still, you know, since it is just pretty much straight manual muscle testing, it'll be, you know, it'll be a really good resource for you. Manual muscle testing. So that's Kendall's, oh, I just said it. Mm, uh, what did I say? <laughs> let me get, let me find it again. Kendall's muscle, muscle test, muscles testing and function with posture and pain by Kendall. So again, I'll refer you to the fsbpt.org's textbook survey. Let's see, I'm appearing for the second time. Do you recommend going through everything again or just focus on the weak areas? So for sure, make a list of your top 10 and hit the weakest areas first. By so doing, that's going to assure that you stay on top of those things that give you the worst time last time. But by the same token, you can't forget anything that you knew for the last time either, your strengths the last time. So therefore, I recommend just using, uh, like you can use my outline, you use the content, I mean, whatever you want, but use an outline that has all the topics and then check it off as you go through. Make sure you you list the, the top 10, make sure you're hitting the weakest areas first and then reviewing the other areas as needed. So there you go. All right, sweet. Well, I think we, we're up here at the hour mark. I, I really appreciate everyone taking the time to be here tonight. As always, um, I want you to check over, check at ptfinalexam.com, head over there and uh, you can subscribe to the blog. Be sure not to miss any of the great posts. I've got some prosthetic articles. I've got some ligament healing, tendon healing. I've got lots of articles that I've been writing and more on the way. I've got a good motor control article that I'll be publishing soon. And um, yeah, head over to ptfinalexam.com. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe. And um, yeah, we'll catch you on the flip side. So good luck in your studying. Really, really appreciate you being here tonight.